Welcome back to Anxiety Slayer. I'm Shan Vanderleek here with my wonderful friend and co-host Ananga Sivier. Today we're going to be talking about how to stop dwelling on unwelcome thoughts. Welcome back, Ananga. Hey, Shan. This is an excellent topic for us to discuss because I know both of us sometimes still find ourselves dwelling on unwelcome thoughts, even though we know what we need to do. And thankfully have those resources so that we can get past that quickly. So let's talk more about this. How can we stop dwelling on unwelcome thoughts? Well, as you just mentioned, Shan, it is an ongoing thing. The mind will repeatedly chip in. And the, when we get into difficulties, when we believe it's propaganda, when we listen to it. So for all of us, this is going to be ongoing work. We can't stop the thoughts. We can grow better thoughts, we can slow them down, but we can't stop the mind. So I think the key word here is in dwelling, in listening to the chattering of the mind. That's where we can really make a change. We mentioned a few weeks ago in a podcast what had really helped me with overcoming anxiety, which was some wisdom teachings from the Vedas, the Bhagavad Gita, which is the key life manual and wisdom text of the Vedas. And that really gave me great understanding into the nature of my mind and how to work better with it, how to bring it more under control and free myself from its tyranny. Because at that time in my life, my mind was really giving me a horror story. It was incredibly painful, the degree of anxiety I was in. So this is what really helped me, which was the understanding that the mind creates its own disturbing dialogue. It does it itself. It has its own energy It stores the impressions of all our past experiences and then it gathers them together to form our default inner dialogue. So if we've suffered some stress and trauma in the past, it's got that all logged in the library for us and most of us have to a greater or lesser degree some stories to tell. And that dialogue from the mind can kick off as unwanted thoughts without any apparent cause or provocation. It can just manifest that voice in our head for me that was a real help to understand that because very often when we're suffering with anxiety we think I was fine five minutes ago I'm trying to take care of myself why is this kicking off again why am I thinking this why am I having these thoughts and as soon as we study them and take them seriously then immediately the anxiety sensations come into the body so that really helped me understanding this teaching that the mind has a negative bias which will disturb us by imagining problems that don't exist and by exaggerating small challenges into bigger worries. That's the nature of the mind. And I love the acronym that you and I have talked about over the years and we've probably shared, but to, but to bring that forward, that fear or, or false evidence appearing real is something that we all have to deal with on a regular basis. The, the mind creates this fear by showing us false evidence and making it appear real. And that's what we need to sort out. Yeah, initially, it's kind of like a questioning voice in, in your ears. Like, what do you think about that? You know, what if this could be this? We talk a lot about health anxiety, and it's something you and I both still have to keep under tight control. It's a really common anxiety the mind immediately what do you think that could be and if you get the mind at that point and stop it then you can start to get back in control and experience peace again but it's when the mind goes into the the first person where it goes from saying in your ear what do you think this could be to you saying oh my god I think it's this I think I have that that means you've believed the mind's propaganda it flips really makes its way in there and then we start to suffer the horrible symptoms of anxiety Yeah, it's no fun. And thankfully, there are so many resources and so many things that we can do to get our mind right, to rein it in. Yeah, reining it in is really the the key to stop it. Speaking its propaganda, when it's whispering doubt and fear thoughts in your own, to stop it there and then and not let it go any further. And it does require constant vigilance, gentle vigilance, but it's something we need to work with throughout our lives. You... We're talking about 
sharing some information from the Gita, a Sanskrit verse. There are many verses on the mind in the Gita, but there's one that I particularly enjoy that for me just gave such a fresh insight into this hierarchy in us and how we can use our intelligence to rein the mind in. So this is a beautiful verse. And the Sanskrit goes, Yato yato nischalati manas chanchalam ashtiram tatas tato niyam yatad atmanyeva vasham nayet. The translation is that from wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature, one must certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self. So there are some interesting words in that verse that I often like to meditate on. You see these words used throughout the Vedas, particularly in Ayurveda when we talk about the disturbed mind, the agitated and churned up mind. This word chanchalam is used, which means flickering, moving. And here you also have a ashtiram, which means unsteady. So we're being cautioned that the mind is easily disturbed, as we've discussed many times in the podcast, flickering, unsteady. So the first encouragement in practicing control of the mind is to remember that it is subordinate to our intelligence. The mind sits under the control of the intelligence. And we get into trouble when our intelligence believes the mind's propaganda and we start seeing its stories and its projections and its fear whisperings, the false evidence appearing real, we start to take that as fact. And one of the things that we can do when this happens is practice conscious redirection. When your mind whispers fear in your ear, what, you know, what can you do when that, when that comes up? And so we recommend that you stop and take a deep cleansing breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. You might even say stop out loud just to really catch yourself when you're in that space, and then start to question the mind's evidence and authority over what's happening. And then lastly, to redirect your attention to your truth right here, right now, in this moment. One of the easiest ways to do that is an an example of what's happening right here. Right, Right here in this moment, I am in my chair with my feet on the floor, looking at my computer screen, talking to Ananga, creating a podcast for you. That's the reality of what's happening. So if you start where you are and what you're doing and be mindful of your body, your hands might be on your lap, your feet are on the floor, you're making contact with the surface that's supporting it, you're grounding yourself a bit. And then another thing that you can do to take it further is to list Three things that you see, two things that you hear, one thing that you can feel. And all of this helps you get grounded and back in your body so that you can regroup. The trick of the mind is to make us believe that it's the only voice, it's our only voice, but it's not, and that's not the truth. Yeah, that really is where we get into trouble is when we believe the mind when it starts whispering its fears to us and we... We believe it. One of my favorite Gita teachers is a monk called Chaitanya Charan, and he describes the mind as being like a crafty ventriloquist. (laughs) I just love that. It's true. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it's there on our shoulder, trying not to let us see it moving its lips. It wants us to think that that's the voice, and it likes to whisper to us, pretending to be our authority, but it isn't in charge. And the more we can practice stopping... And checking its scripts, its stories, its fear talk, the less it will disturb us. Let's remember, too, that this does take practice and vigilance, but it really will make a difference between mental pain and mental peace. Yeah. One thing that's really helped me with that is to develop the understanding that when unwanted thoughts come into my mind, It's not me. It's not the core me. Right. It's my mind speaking. And I noticed over the years the way I reference my mind has changed when I say my mind it affirms that I have a mind I own a mind but I'm not the mind you know when we say what's wrong with me then really we're bringing anxiety into our core 
our core identity, but we're not our anxiety. We're not our painful thoughts. So that really helps me. And if I'm having a difficult day or anxiety is trying to rear its ugly head, I'll say, my mind's giving me a really hard time today, but it doesn't feel like it's me. And that really puts me in the driving seat to choose, okay, what do I need to do? My mind's kicking off. Anxiety is trying to escalate. What can I do? How do I support myself? What action do I need to take? And that gives us the space and the pause to do what you just described, Shan. Conscious redirection. Get a glass of water, get some rescue remedy, stand up, take a deep breath, look around you. What can I see? Where am I? And what is my truth right here, right now? What is what I know to be true right now, not the propaganda that's coming into my head? And there's several other tips that we can share as well. Uh, One that I find really helpful is labeling your thoughts without any emotional engagement. So you use simple labels like anxious thought or worry, but don't get into it. You just keep it really brief and simple. You might observe with detachments by saying something like, this anxiety is building in me rather than I'm anxious or I'm filled with anxiety. And if you think of your thoughts as temporary and changing, very much like the weather, I love thinking about how the clouds float across the sky and how quickly weather can change. Just imagine your thoughts floating by this way. It's such a great visual and reminder that, okay, this will pass. And lastly, I think that uh, we don't want to fight. We don't want to try and stop or fight the thoughts. That gives all of the power back to your mind. Instead, this is where we stop, breathe, redirect, and do the best that we can. And remember that this is my truth right now. And I'm here doing this right now. What's happening that goes right back to what we talked about earlier? Yeah, that just tethers us back to the present moment and to reality, which is the only place from which we can make a change. We can only make a change now. Anxiety always wants us to time travel. It wants us to feel bad about the past or worry about the future. But when we're in the here and now, and we're tethered back to that place, I'm here, I'm doing this, this is what I know right now, then we get the the pause and then we can start bringing in other techniques that help us tame our thoughts like EFT tapping, breathing practice, or even just doing some reading and studying more the nature of the mind and how to work with it and how to tame it. These are all things that really give us more control and more peace and more hope. Thanks for listening. If you love our podcast, please consider exploring our Patreon for loads of Anxiety Slayer extras for calming anxiety, including exclusive posts, guided meditations, tapping sessions, popular episodes from our archives, and behind-the-scenes conversations. You can learn more at patreon.com forward slash anxietyslayer.